Hello and welcome to the Racetech Euro V8 Supercar Championship live on Apex Racing TV. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick and alongside me for this evening's racing is Marco Barbonier and we are back at Barcelona. The first time we've been at this circuit, Marco, in this series and we've got the traditional format for you coming back once again. It should be a superb evening of racing. Absolutely, Sam. Hello, everyone. Hello to you as well, Sam. And yes, we are back to the traditional format on a traditional racetrack. It has been a very interesting start of the season uh, here in the in the V8 uh, in the Racetech uh, V8 Championship. Let's hope for a great, great show from these drivers as we are approaching, uh, you know, the middle part of the calendar for this season's championship. As the drivers, uh, as you can see, are already having uh, their way with qualifying and as you can see it is George McClay leading in qualifying in front of Jackson and Nurmela as we bring you the qualifying graphics up it's going to be a nice one Sam I think this uh, track of course uh, you very strange in the sense that you know it's a it's a, it's it's a Despite not being that, that, that recent, uh, it still, I think, embodies almost everything that we know from uh, a traditional uh, Formula 1 racetrack. Very wide, lots of run-off areas, uh, difficult to pass, uh, despite this track being opened in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, but uh, uh, especially since now it, it, it is and it has basically always been one of the, if not now, the test track for F1. Uh, it has really kept up with the times and of course not always for the best. I'm talking to you, last chicane of horrors. <laughs> well, I was about to say, uh, this circuit is a little bit unlike maybe traditional Tilka circuits, which always kind of have the same uh, formula, where it's a long straight, some fast corners to make fans go, oh, look at that, and then some slow corners for some overtaking. And of course, when this place was designed, it did have a distinct characteristic of it being still a very fast speed circuit, really no slow corners whatsoever. Uh, they, they, they've spoiled that slightly with the final chicane, and we are using this uh, this slightly different layout. Uh, thankfully, we've got the different turn 10, which in my opinion is a little bit better, just because it uh, makes an extra overtaking spot on the circuit. But this uh, final chicane will be extremely tricky for the drivers to deal with because that traction zone I imagine Mark accelerating coming out of the chicane and then it's not going to be necessarily easy flat out through the final corner and uh, as a skip you drive I'm sure you're quite used to uh, just going easy flat through there but it's going to be one of the tricky zones and of course to make any overtakes around here you've got uh, to absolutely you, nail that corner. You know Skippy are racing here this week uh, in the national yeah. circuit and uh, I did only one race in this race uh, I got uh, uh, basically, I clipped uh, a nose cone of a car that was sitting in the middle of the road, broke my front left uh, and uh, added uh, into the wall. Therefore, I promised to never race here again uh, this week, uh, and I still haven't. Uh, that was in the first lap, of course. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, basically no knowledge uh, of uh, running around here uh, this week with the Skippy, but yeah, I mean, I'm quite sure there are some differences between this car and the Skippy on this particular racetrack, as uh, qualifying is about to end, and you see McClay uh, is probably going to be on pole position, unless uh, we have a last late dash from Nicole Foggy, who has uh, been uh, in an uncharacteristic sixth place right now uh, for uh, XVR Sim Racing. Here we go, final corner for him, as he's not improving in the first sector and not even in the second. Something that we can say thank you to a racing finally is to have only three sectors in this racetrack, you know? Because usually oh, even the, the traditional length racetracks, uh, I'm talking about uh, Spa or Imola, or you know, every track that could conceivably fit in, a, in your ideal of a racetrack has somewhere between five and ten sectors. So, uh, thankfully, maybe a racing going to the more... Uh, uh, you know, conventional route, which makes it even easier for us to follow the action. As you can see, only one car left on the racetrack. It is Chris Jackson, but I don't think that Chris is going to improve or maybe not even have the time to post a varied lap time as we are about to uh, end qualifying and start race Ooh. one as uh, Chris makes uh, the fans very happy. 
there at the chicane. Were you, I mean, do you even remember? No, you, you can't remember when the chicane came into existence. The horror amongst no, I... race fans. Oh, seven or oh, six? No, it was earlier. I think it was uh, I really? 2002, 2003, I think, when we had uh, oh, wow. that, that chicane, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Nevertheless, it's there to stay, unfortunately, and we have to deal with it. Uh, for well, the well you being. say that. But of course, they did extend the runoff area there now. So it would in in Formula One, you could easily run the old layout. Yeah. Um. But I mean. uh, so far, no changes on that front. Apologies, we we have talked about that chicane on the eighty percent of this broadcast mm. so far. But it is infuriating. Let us know on the uh, comments uh, if you agree with us on that one. We can go to the grid then for this uh, round of the championship. Twenty five minute first race, of course, to set us up tonight. So it's George McClay, championship leader, car number three on pole position. Chris Jackson lines up alongside. And then it's Johnny Brandon, defending champion. Marco Namella in fourth, former champion. Nicole Foggy in fifth, two-time champion. Tony Kleesman rounds out the top six. Those top six are created by only half a second. Then it's Steve Lavelli. Nice qualifying for him. Yasuo Sebula, Richard Warmium, Jamie McKnight. Watch out for him from 10th. Then it's Wayne Sanderson, Harold Stadler, Richard Alsop, Sam Buzan, Anthony Woodward, Nikolai Bogotayev, Peter Bingham, Ole Christian Unberg, Justin Rabello, Dominic Sori, and then the others who did not set a qualifying time. Hopefully they will take the grid. Clyde Whiting, Andrew Hoffman, Bill Switzer, and Michael Frost. As the uh, drivers get onto the grid, they've got a uh, two minutes time to get onto the grid. Anyone who's done official racing will, uh, will know about that. And uh, that's been a bit of a a reputation among some of these drivers, particularly Tony Kloosterman, who quite often takes the entire two minutes. And yeah, uh, speaking to Johnny Branton pits. in the past. Oh, yeah. will he? Yes, for penalty, him, Greg Carr and Ant Woodward. And just before we start, uh, let me say that uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Yaroslav Sebula, he is really thankful to Digital Motorsports Company from Ireland because they sent him, uh, despite these tough times, uh, try, uh, try, tough, tough times for everyone, they were... Uh, uh, on point and sent him uh, a new steering wheel uh, rim uh, for today otherwise he wouldn't have been able to race so he is very happy uh, with them and uh, thanks hopefully that's good uh, no, i mean that that's uh, very good because he can uh, join us in the race Absolutely. a very fast wheel because he's now in uh, in eighth and here we go yeah about to get this round of the championship underway george mcclay from the pole it's a long run down to turn one, but McClay has a decent launch. Uh, going to really be challenging, though, into turn one is Chris Jackson. He might just be getting ahead. Was that a bit of a pump? Bump maybe from Johnny Brandon, who looks to the inside himself. He wants to go up into second place. They're rubbing. No, oh! he's And now going round is Jackson. And that's going to involve Brandon, who drops oh! a lot of place as well. Marco Numella moves up into second place. Good start for Foggy. Sebulas up into third place. That new wheel is helping him out a lot. Sanderson drops down a few places, but Jackson out to top, out to the 10th uh, position now. Big problems for him and big problems for Brandon as well. He's slowing on the inside. Yeah, I saw one of the XVR cars. Maybe Brandon uh, jump on one of those uh, speed bumps there at the chicane and take some massive air. Hopefully he's okay as we have another car going wide there. I think it's uh, Clyde Whiting himself as uh, some more argy bargy here. Also goes in the, in the gravel, the grass and uh, uh, Warmingham jumps up to fifth so yeah i think it was johnny brandon they are uh, or maybe or maybe steve lavelli what one i think steve lavelli because it was one of the red cars so they have two red cars in xvr i think it was steve lavelli judging by the fact that he's uh, a little bit behind uh, his teammates but george mcclay perfect start uh, marco murmela of course uh, we have talked to him at length after the first few rounds of the season and he seems like uh, he's going to improve round after round as uh, the action all over the place uh, Yaroslav Sebula defending uh, from uh, Nicole Foggy again that new rim uh, I mean he couldn't have a better commercial for that hopefully we don't jinx him if he crashes it's his fault if he does well it's his new rim uh, he, of course uh, it's thanks to his new rim Absolutely. Bill Switz having a little bit of an issue further down the order, but we'll stick with this one. Nicole Foggy deep in the draft now, trying to get past into third position. I don't think going to fight it too much. It's the 88 car of Sebula. He was off 
line for much of that final chicane and Foggy will come to move up into the top three. However, he has set himself a three second task to catch up to McClay and Namella further up the road. So uh, the season six champion making some good progress now. Uh, Richard Alsop, he wants to get past Richard Warmingham. I was saying how Warmingham, uh, I was thinking at least, how Warmingham it wasn't a brilliant qualifying for him, seeing that he's always been on pace with his teammates, Boggy and Brandon, for much of the season, being faster than Lavelli, and yet he qualified quite far behind all of them. But he was in the right place for those first couple of corners and has moved up plenty of places. Here is Chris Jackson. He wants to make up, make up some places. He's still sitting in 10th place after that disastrous turn one. We'll certainly get a replay of it later on once I think everything's calmed down. Uh, but uh, Sanderson behind him, making things quite tricky for the Canadian. Yeah, he, Jackson went past Lavelli. Lavelli passed him straight back. Huh? Uh, so maybe sporting some damage we see maybe Stadler going a bit wide and here we go with uh, with Lavelli himself maybe fencing a move but around the outside you know Sam it's not very easy it's, it's uh, oh and that that is Ooh. Richard Alsop uh, pointing in the wrong direction oh and there's a massive uh, pile up there with uh, well not massive but I thought it was going to be a massive roadblock more than a pile up like uh, you know police style and poor Nikolai Bogataev, who has gone back to his old livery uh, and to the Ford, I might I add, uh, for this round, uh, is now missing important bits and pieces uh, from his uh, triple five Mustang. Yeah, Bogataev was in 13th place before that. It's going to stay out on track, which is ambitious, and now we find out what happened to him. Maybe, yeah, let's have, get a closer look. Who, who did these cameras? Okay, so he spun and bang, straight uh, uh, head on with uh, that uh, Balkan car of Peter Bingham. Of course, these cameras are beautiful and I would never even know to begin to do a camera. Uh, I asked uh, someone in the known to explain me uh, numerous week 13s ago and every week 13 ever since. We'll get her one day, Sam. But uh, we, I, we I, will, we will. I think your camera Although, packs I, are unrivaled. I mean, really, I mean, I wish that was the case, to be honest. <laughs> um, but uh, no, uh, they, they, they're all right. These ones are all right compared to the uh, to the uh, eye racing ones, which wow. have somehow got worse over the years. It is uh, quite mind boggling. That is How a low they... bar to compare you against. My mum always it told me that I have to compare myself to the best, not. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, Brandon gets past Warmingham. Yeah. Um, that was uh, not the hardest thoughts overtake of all time. I, I, I am quite harsh on XP. I mean, that's good teamwork. Fun. I'm a big supporter of, uh, of uh, team coordination. May as well get the uh, best result possible for the uh, for the team. This is what happened to Jackson. So Jackson didn't get an amazing launch. And then I think Brandon must have given him a shove because he had a bit of overspeed. No, it, I think it was just natural overspeed. Oh, then Brandon not. gives him a second shove. And is it going to be a third? I, I don't know if it was the shove which actually hurts me in the end, unless it was a bit of net code, or whether it was just Jackson losing it by himself on those very cold tyres, obviously. And in the end, it was Brandon who lost out second worst. And uh, great shame for those guys. Nice, of course, winning a race last time out at uh, at Barber Motorsports Park, and that was a Lavelli Ooh. having to go way over the curve, getting plenty of air, and picking up a hefty slowdown as well. Yeah, so we finally found uh, what, which one was the, the the XDR car that went in for a nice ride. Speaking of uh, jumps, uh, don't forget uh, this Sunday, well, most more more like early Monday, uh, we will be back uh, with the Reckless Racing Series uh, at uh, I think 1:15 GMT, and we will be showing you uh, another race this time for from wild horse so if you like your pro tracks uh, and me and austin sure do uh, join us and you will not regret it uh. it was yeah. really fun from what i saw the the other day um and i like the I, well i like the reverse the the inverted top five i thought that was a good idea and also the um uh, the the neutralizing the field with like five laps to go. I thought that was uh, pretty cool. So no, certainly to check out that uh, that series. There's uh, Stadler. It still hasn't been overtaken by Lavelli, 
And Jackson, yeah, not making much progress, is he? Must he made up damage, a pace. I think, Sam, because that car uh, is uh, not as quick as it was in qualifying. Of course, uh, well, it's easy to say that that he had S and M because he was whacked uh, two, three times, maybe even four. But yeah, uh, it seems to be struggling to find the pace. Someone who has a good pace is this guy right here. Nico Foggy, fastest lap of the race and threatening to attack uh, Marco Nurmela for, for second place. Well, that's a Zika. Nurmela was having a fight with everyone. Racecraft Esports have been a fantastic addition to this series since the new supercar came out. And he's leaving plenty of room on the inside. Foggy with a slide. Locking up the rear brakes ever so slightly. Almost, almost squares up the corner. Still not as close as he wants to be. Foggy has been setting the fast after the race for the last three laps, I think. Just going faster and faster. Admittedly, not a whole lot faster than McClay. Usually about fourths of a second faster. But no doubt that that qualifying was not representative of his true pace. And for the feature later on, he's going to be right in the mix. So only two seconds off the race leader. Well, as a Klusman has a big launch himself, he's running down in 22nd place at the moment. Yeah, we saw Tony blink a bit there, uh, disappear and then reappear, and that is something that I think, especially in a series like this, that has drivers uh, from all, all over the world, sadly, it, it's going to be another uh, byproduct of the tough times we are in, Sam, but I think that especially when, uh, especially when North America as a whole uh, is going to go on lockdown uh, and maybe you guys uh, when you will also i think even though you are basically there uh, i think uh, we'll have to deal with a little bit bad connection uh, for a bit uh, as you know they are already limiting the bandwidth uh, just a bit of netflix and youtube in here in europe and that is to prevent uh, i mean the first couple of days uh, of the lockdown here in italy if you remember i had trouble connecting to almost any major website uh, due to the, how congested was the network as uh, Foggy goes on the inside. Gotta be careful, we've seen in the, in the SRW Enduro that that curb on the right is uh, deadly, especially with uh, new tires. And Foggy cannot make the pass. Yeah, he can't get past at the moment. That was good defense from Nomella. They're four and a half seconds ahead of Brandon, so they can afford to fight quite a bit and probably not lose any places. Foggy's messed it up again and now he's on the grass. And, well, he is going to lose the place surely to Brandon now. He's skimming around in the gravel and there is his teammate right behind him can Brandon take advantage of this straight away he's not quite close enough so Foggy at least doesn't lose a place but any chance of the race win certainly over most likely second place over as well we aren't yet halfway through this race though he can produce the times that he was producing earlier on he might still stand a chance but that's an uncharacteristic mistake from Foggy and that's uh you could kind of see it happening the lap before as well. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, speaking of uh, weird happenings in these uh, last couple of days, I remember the flashing lights dilemma or, uh, or mystery of, the, of Wednesday. Someone just uh, followed our channel on Twitch uh, where we are currently not streaming this race uh, because wow. uh, I got uh, locked out of the account and there is nothing else going on there. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but uh, thank you, for, even though you, there is no way for you to listen to us saying thanks to you, so I, I don't know. <laughs> you can like us on, uh, or, or follow us on Twitch, by the way, uh, if you are listening on uh, YouTube. Are we are we on live on Facebook as well? Yes, Facebook and uh, yeah. YouTube are good. Uh, Twitch doesn't like me today. So... Jackson got past Lavelli also um, thanks to Brian Lockwood. It may have been a while ago, to be honest. He was saying how Alsop had a bit of a spin. Yeah, he spun um, just before uh, war, just before uh, Bogatire uh, spun course, as well. Yes. We got just a glimpse of that, as you see the replay of the overtake. But uh, we always do what the crowd wants. And, well, that's a bit too late, but you can get the gist of it. They got a little bit of help, maybe from, uh, was it Brandon, I think, the golden XVR car, and then you can see it on the bottom of your screen, just for a second, the other wreck uh, involving uh, uh, involving uh, Bingham and poor Nikolai Bogatire in his brand new sparkling Ford. Well, can I say that he's maybe, you know, uh, 
uh, amending for his sins for having raced with the Olden for the first few rounds of the season after being a lifelong Ford driver. You're always going to twist it, aren't you? You see, if he jumped into the Holden, you'd be saying, oh, it's because he jumped into the Holden. You're spinning this incredibly. You're a spin doctor, clearly. I mean, you can see this Q, um, which is uh, growing, because now on the back of it is Richard Alsop after that spin. Um, and uh, how Stadler? You, you can't. It's really tricky to overtake around this place. And I, I mean, I don't want to. Like this, this meeting's been very good so far, and I don't want to be harsh on other championships. But when it, whenever we visit here, usually it's not the best race in the world. I, I, I'm just saying that. I don't think I've ever seen a good race around here. Um, or or, or a, a spectacular race, shall we say. Because it is just so difficult to overtake. And um, you often can kind of just get trains like this. Which is all right. It's pretty good. But, but we do want a, 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 something to build up after it. A, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, so far, Stadler has just been able to stall this all. And even Jackson is failing to get particularly close to overtaking him. Perhaps Alsop is the most likely driver to pass this. And Buzan having a good race. Been a bit of a tricky season for Buzan after winning uh, one race last season, of course, at Watkins Glen. Um, but a uh, better pace today. All these guys only about a second lap off the leaders, which is, you know, really good around quite a long circle. By the way, leading the way in the in the club championship race is Steve Lavelli, as you can see by the white uh, banner on his car, which is black for some reason as he goes a bit wide or maybe it is wide, I don't know but yeah getting passed uh, by uh, Sanderson uh, right now and now uh, Buzin is threatening him as they head for uh, the left-hander there very hard braking very tricky to get the line right beautiful camera shot you can see the different lines being taken this uh, they have changed this corner a bit. It looks like one of those corners that you can find in Abu Dhabi or, uh, you know, or Bahrain. One of those... Uh, or, sorry, it looks like the final sector at Coldown. I should be more clear. Ah, uh, yeah. Like... Like... Oh, look at that. I'm jumping hard on those curbs. But by virtue of this little bit of a scrap that we are having, Sanderson has pulled away and so have Jackson and Stadler, you can see. Uh, way, way at the back of the camera shot there as we are seeing now Lavelli defending uh, on the inside uh, and uh, a racecraft car now looking to the outside which is uh, not a very easy line to follow especially because of those curves there and then he slides a bit uh, and also we'll have to be happy with P12 for the time being it was a great move, by the way, from Buzan. Had to go side by side for much of that third sector. Eventually managed to get past uh, once again. I said earlier on, having a good race up into the top 10 is the ASEA Racing Driver. A little bit of a check in on our race leader, George McClay, three seconds ahead of Mark Inomella, just edging out that gap, half tenth faster on that last time round. Uh, Foggy not catching up as fast as he was earlier on. Buzan's just had a bit of a rubbish lap. Um, over a second slower than the three leaders. He's certainly faster than that. He's like, yeah, so Sobele is still only two seconds behind. Then it's Richard Warming up, having a much better race than he did qualifying, but cannot get past Sebula at the moment. And then uh, we go back to uh, that big battle that we uh, were looking at a little bit earlier on. Stadler ahead of Jackson. And Stadler, who, uh, yeah, with another not great qualifying. It's, it's, it's not much of a correlation between the pace in qualifying and the pace in the race right now. Some guys who are qualified really high up are struggling to beat their lower placed counterparts. Jackson is faster. I'm um, yet to see him really get alongside. And of course, with this final chicane, very much the concertina effect, the driver head always gets you on the thoughts of that bit earlier than you. And then for the half, first half of the straight, they're just pulling yards and meters away from you. It's only right at the end where the slipstream really does kick in and you can start to gain some time back. That's what Richard Alsop is doing here. And he gets the bonus of the slipstream from Buzan as well. That should help him a bit as a very slow car on the inside. Can Alsop get it done this time around the outside through one? He'll have the inside for two. He had to work for it, but he is up that place. He's into 11th now ahead of uh, Steve Lavelli. 
That's low card there was Tony Klusterman who is four laps down, so wow. maybe again struggling either with his connection or his system because we saw him uh, crash and blink and uh, reappear and disappear. So that is either a uh, freeze uh, or uh, you know, we know he races in PR, so might have had an issue with that as well. I am seeing him as disconnected relatively recently and then reconnected. Okay. In fact, I don't know when that was, but he was the last driver to disconnect, so I assume that was during the race. So let's check in on the other drivers here in the uh, back end of the field. This beautifully levered Team Viking Skyr of uh, Ole Christian Unneberg from Norway. And Woodward, the only, no, one of the two men without a nation in our uh, entry list. Let, let me check. There must have been something wrong with uh, the nation code. I had a bit of a debate the other day yeah. about uh, mm -hmm. whether or not we should have England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales well, um, he, as part he, of the UK. He, he put himself down as uh, Wales UK, so... Okay. System won't like that, but it will like this. And there we go with the beautiful Welsh flag next to his name. I mean, I'd say get rid of Great Britain, to be honest. I think get rid of Great Britain on our, on our overlay and just have all the different nations flags. I think it feels a little bit more personal. Um... But uh, we, we, we'll see if we ever change that. Here is Alsop and uh, Buzan. And Alsop making quick work now. So that's another place past Buzan. He's got to watch out for Lavelli. Now, two seconds for Alsop to catch up to Sanderson, who has had a slightly better pace in recent laps, although a 49 that last time round, compared to the leaders who are doing 47s. So Alsop probably has time to make up one more place, and then after that would be Jackson and Stadler. Uh, who are um, in the uh, mid 48s. So they should be all right. Here is a uh, Sebula and Romium. Pretty much has been like this for a while, but this is slightly closer for Warmium. And we're coming into one of the best overtaking spots on the circuit. That slide though for Warmium is not going to help him out whatsoever. Because flats out this turn nine in uh, modern F1 cars. Quite a heavy braking area in these supercars. And then, yeah, this turn to a massive braking area. And if you're relatively close, you can just, you know, plunge it down the inside. And the uh, uh, defending driver hasn't really got a choice in that, so they'll just have to miss the corner. Uh, but even for that, he's too far behind as well. You made me realize something. Something I would never think I, I would have said. Wow, but, okay. Uh... Oh, oh, Jackson. Jackson is around. And he's going to lose that place to Sanderson, and it might be best to reverse. No, he's going to just drive forwards, but that is dropped him back to 12th place in two seconds to catch up to Lavelli. And he was uh, getting close to Stadler, and this is the, the make or break point in the lap. And just almost going offline there, and the rear end spinning him round. I miss all the Brexit drama. Yeah. Yeah, I, I miss it a bit, yeah. It's better than the current situation. It, it maybe gives you a bit of perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I mean... I, I mean, so, uh, apologies to go on a tangent here, but it, it is concerning that we, we, we do fiddle over tiny, tiny things when it comes to economics. But for the whole world basically just to shut down and all the systems to just shut down. But not it's, us. Uh, it's a pretty big change. Not us. We not are us. the one we... industry who are thriving, to say the least. Um, <laughs> anyone who's seen the eSports Network recently, literally, our viewing figures have doubled. I mean, we, we've had two, over 200 viewers on pretty much every stream. I mean, that was uh, fantasy land before. Um, but uh, that is the one uh, silver lining, I guess. Unberg's just made a mistake. Got down to 15th place now. Oh, there he is. He's only just getting back underway at turn five, that mistake is. Yeah, the only left-hander uh, at the beginning of the lap. Very lazy spin, but a spin nonetheless. And then he uh, carefully waited. Let's see the blink. And he waited, and he waited, and he lost uh, three positions, uh, unfortunately, for him. Uh, where is our race leader? He's here. He's lapping in 148, the last lap. So we might expect a couple of laps more. Uh, as this battle here continues for the top five, Warmingham has been on the back end. 
uh, of, uh, of, of, of Sebula for the past uh, four or five laps now, uh, but hasn't been able to make the move. Again, going back to what we were uh, uh, saying earlier about this place not being a very easy place to pass. We Maybe we could change turn one. Do you, do you want to change turn one? Make it a bit slower? Because I think that would massively increase the overtaking around this place. Or is it quite a nice play? Do you think it works well? The problem is that most of the good passing spots around here are following uh, long, uh, very, very long and, uh, and uh, wide corners. Therefore, it's very difficult uh, in some cars, for example, you know, Formula cars, it's very difficult because of the... Uh, to follow because of the... As we have uh, here, uh, McKnight and Woodward going at it. Very difficult to follow because of the Vertier, no? Oh, oh, Sebula, wide! Ooh! Ooh, oh. oh, and he goes to the inside, didn't want to give up the inside line. Lifts off early, and Warmingham is passed, and... I guess he was extremely close going through turn nine and the pressure was too much in the end. There he is and oh well Warmingham gets the right way. That was good. I think most drivers would go to the inside there and there would have been a crash but Warmingham sensible went to the outside, went to the open track and uh, managed to get past. So, so yeah, that is a problem of course and also I think uh, the same for uh, you know completely different cars like these ones. Of course, you don't have the problem of the, of dirt here, but you have the problem of uh, be, having to be very careful when you go on the gas, uh, as not to run into the car in front of you, even here in the final straight. Of course, uh, thankfully with these cars, it's a little bit easier to uh, go uh, when you want in this final corner, but I think this is the biggest culprit for the luck. I mean, you, you would think with a straight like this, F1 overtakes and DRS would be a piece of cake, but of course they, they are not. Drivers have to lift so much because of the dirty air in real life that uh, DRS or not, it's very difficult to make uh, a pass as uh, Buzin uh, and Lavelli are exchanging positions. Meanwhile, as we keep on following this battle, where is the race leader? He's here and I think this is the white flag as he's 30 seconds away from the, from the, from the uh, 25 minutes mark and he's sitting uh, more or less towards the end of the lap, and this battle continues, and Buzin using a very creative line to defend from Lavelli. Could be for reverse good pole, or it may not be. It, 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 whoever finishes ahead might be on reverse good pole, whoever finishes behind might be on reverse good pole. Uh, but it really could come down to something like that, just ahead of them, instead of being caught by Sanson and Alsop in these closing stages, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Meanwhile, George McClay, and he's taken two race wins in this series before this season. He's going to get, what, his fourth race win, I believe. It's a perfect start to this Barcelona round for George McClay. And he wins race one. And by a comfortable margin. Namella, nice second place. Thoroughly deserved that one. Foggy holds off Brandon. Warming him. It was very quick. Unfortunately, bottled up for most of the, most of the race. Finishes in fifth. And Sebula, nice sixth place for him. Sanderson and Alsop are going side by side. Sanderson's just going to hold off Alsop right at the line. And also Lavelli going a little bit off the track further behind. He was trying to get past Booz and he gets a nice top 10 in the end. Other battles going on. Whiting and Bogotaev are pretty close to one another. But Bogotaev, I think, has left this one too late. Whiting a little bit wide through the chicane and just trying to hold up his rival. The run to line isn't particularly long around this place. And Bogotai will have to give in. It's Clyde White taking 16th place. Winner of the uh, amateur drivers. Um, who was the winner? Was it Steve Lavelli winner? Oh, yeah, Steve Lavelli yes. winner of the amateur drivers. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations to, to Steve then. As the race is over, we are just missing a couple of drivers. In fact, uh, yes, a couple of drivers it is. Andrew Hoffman finishing 20th and in 21st it will be Bill Switzer. And with the uh, not massive grid we have today, that could be reverse grid, Paul. We get say a minus, uh, well if you got like a 20 then plus 5 or something then uh, it's certainly 
certainly happen. Yes, the results appear on the screen without being cr prompted. Another oh, wow. spooky <laughs> occurrence. Uh, so yeah, let's let, let's go through the through, through the race uh, results uh, for race one, Sam. Yes, and it's George McClay who wins out five seconds ahead of Marco Namella. Nice result though that for Namella from fourth on the grid. Uh, Nicole Foggy finishes in third. Johnny Brandon in fourth. There's Richard Warmingham uh, beating Yasor Sebula. How sadly, great defensive driving there to finish in seventh. Uh, Wayne Sanderson, Richard Alsop, and Sam Buzan rounds out the top 10. Top of the amateur drivers, or the top of the club drivers, uh, was uh, Steve Lavelli, Chris Jackson. Well, he nearly got the race lead at turn one. How the race would have panned out differently, I'm sure, if he had been able to consolidate on that. Uh, Jamie McKnight finished in 13th place. Then it was uh, Anthony Woodward, Oleg Christian Unberg, Clyde Whiting, Nikolai Bogotov, Dominic Sori, Justin Rebelle. Andrew Hoffman and Bill Switzer was the last driver finishing on the lead lap. One lap down was Peter Bingham. And uh, Tony Klusman was still running it by the end, but uh, four laps down, I think he disconnected from the server for a bit. Hopefully we, he has a, a better second race, but of course will not be involved in the reverse grid. And Michael Frost also uh, did not finish there in uh, 24th place. And uh, Marco, our favourite time of the uh, of the evening. I swear we do less reverse grids nowadays. I don't know I about mean, you, but I was about they, to they... say that uh, it feels like uh, ages since I did my last yeah. uh, reverse grid. Of course, uh... I guess you don't do American GT, uh, or so you don't do ARL GT anymore, do you? No, so that that's uh, a missed opportunity. Uh, and two weeks ago we had the enduro event, so we didn't do the reverse. Uh, no, super sprints, no. wasn't it? Ah, uh, no, we had the. It was, uh... No, it's a barber. Oh yeah, of course it was Barber. But two weeks ago we had the, the enduro one month ago. So, so, so yeah, sorry, yeah. four weeks ago. So, and less and less series are using the magic of the reverse grid wheel. But this one, thankfully, still does. It's our favorite moment of the day. As Tony Klusterman says that unfortunately he had a computer crash. Let's roll it. And of course, this does kind of count as two wheels, seeing that it is uh, two wheels in in one. So, it does uh, somewhat make up for it. Also, no music, unfortunately, because I forgot. Da, 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 Yeah, okay. thank you, Sam, for the beautiful <laughs> performance. And the reverse is going to be 14 minus 3, which I think uh, makes 11. Oh, there you go. It was for Paul. Steve Lavelli. I, I was saying that, wasn't I, just before? Uh, so Lavelli will get pole position then, um, ahead of uh, Sam Buzan on the grid. Uh, Alsop and Sanderson on the second row of the grid. So uh, that will be a very uh, exciting race coming up for you. We'll be back in the Race Tech UV8 Supercar Series in about 20 minutes' time. See you then.
Welcome back to the Race Tech UV8 Supercar Series live on Apex Racing TV. Once again, I'm Sam Fitzpatrick, and once again, I'm joined alongside by Marco Barbanier. We're just prepping for this second race of the evening. And Marco, it was a pretty simple first race for George McClay, extending his uh, already comfortable championship lead. This race too, they're going to be much more tricky because we saw overtaking at a premium in race one. And so, despite it still being a small reverse grid, going to be tricky for those top guys to move their way up through the order. I agree with you, Sam. I think it's going to be an interesting second race, of course, with uh, 20 minutes added to the total time of race one. So 45 minutes for this one. Uh, we are also racing uh, very late in the evening and as you can see the track temperature is only 26 degrees so this is going to be of helping uh, who knows about the strategy well we should know i, I can tell you that <laughs> um, uh, um, um, basically yes thank you tony Krusterman, as usual our secret informer uh, that said that uh, it's going to be uh, probably 26 uh, laps and but he didn't tell anything about the strategy today so we are left in the dark i mean if we are he tells us stuff and we are still left in the dark uh, because we are terrible i mean at least i am uh, imagine today that he didn't give us any detail about uh, what could happen yeah i mean we we need all the help that we can get but we assume pitting about the midway mark uh we'll need a pit stop this uh this circuit you'd assume um but we'll uh we'll see so on pole position then for this uh, race two of the evening it is steve lavelli after finishing in 11th place in race one then sam buzan richard alsop wayne sanson al stadler al sebula richard warmingham johnny brandon nicole foggy marco namella and race one winner george mcclay chris jackson certainly watch out for him from 12th then it's uh, jane mcknight another top driver in 13th uh, behind that is Anthony Woodward, Ole Christian Unberg, Clyde Whiting, Nikolai Bogatayev, Dominic Sori, Justin Rebello, Andrew Hoffman, Bill Switzer, Peter Bingham, Tony Klusterman from 23rd on the grid, and Michael Frost rounding out the field. So we've got a few more seconds of gridding up, and now we are ready for this second race then of the evening at Barcelona, but Lavelli from pole. And away we go. What pressure can Buzan put onto him into turn one? It's a very good start for the XBR driver. And in fact, it's going to be Alsop trying to gain a place. Awful start for Sanson, already dropping a couple of places. He could be a sitting duck on the inside of the circuit. Bringing his car into the middle of the circuit is Steve Lavelli, coming off from every oh, angle. Oh, here we and go. Spinning round is Sam Buzan from second place, car number two, with an awful start straight away. But it's Lavelli leading Alsop, Stadler moving up a place. Warming him up three places. Samson drops to fifth and Brandon already getting past him as we go into turn four. Oh. And hang to the fence, I think, is, uh, is Hal Stadler from the others. Stadler getting pushed out a little bit on the outside. That was Samson. Apologies. And uh, still hanging to the fence is Richard Warming. Stadler trying to go around the outside of him. Going into turn one, this could be a crucial overtake if he can make it. But Warmingham is hanging on. Next up, into turn six. And actually, Stadler has got his nose ahead. Will Warmingham come back on the brakes? Yes, he will. And he will keep that third place. Back again comes Stadler, though. They've been side by side for a few corners now at this rate. You've got Brandon just behind and Foggy as well, who's moved up into sixth place. And this time, it's Stadler who moves ahead. And I think Brandon and Foggy will soon follow. As a uh, fight for the lead uh, is also brewing up as look at that there's an angry pack of V8s uh, adding for the left hand here the new uh, corner quote unquote new corner of course uh, uh, that they opened a few years back as uh, also look at I mean ap apart from poor Sam Buzin everything was uh, squeaky clean at the start poor Sam is uh, as you can see lagging behind oh here we go Lavelle is around I must have got hit the former race leader, Alsop, moves into the lead. And this is how it happened. I think it was on his own, you know? Let's see. Yeah. So from the club race lead, from the overall race lead, could be a crucial mistake from Lavelli. And uh, yeah, just carried way too much speed into the corner. So Alsop leads then two and a half seconds back to Brennan, who has got past Stadler. That's big. 
for Johnny Grandin looking to win, I believe, his first race win of the uh, of the season. Um, Stadler, yet yeah, in third place. Foggy, can he get past into fourth? Nope, this is where Foggy had issues earlier on, of course. And McClay is only just behind them. He's stuck behind uh, Sanderson currently. And Novella having to defend from Sebula. Not being a brilliant start for the driver who finished in second place in, uh, in race one. He's certainly been left by the other front runners early on here. Stadler uh, still defending from Foggy as Brandon is trying to pull away from uh, this duo as almost contact. Let's jump on board on the gearbox uh, of the Texan Speed Style uh, Motorsport driver here. As you can see, Foggy with a late dive on the inside and it works. So he gets the position and jumps into third and now he will go and try and catch uh, Brandon and Allsop as well and uh, look at Wayne Sanderson he's having a decent run so far as you were saying McClay is there warming and uh, Nurmela Sebula is there as well at the top nine are uh, creating a little bit of a gap of course in 10th we have the previous leader uh, Steve Lavelli he is uh, of course lagging a bit after that mistake he had uh, uh, on the previous lap and look at now because uh, McClay is uh, fencing his chances uh, with Sanderson no gain though, that is remarkable how small the slipstream effect is. I guess Sanderson's getting a little bit from the car ahead, but look at the brakes on George McClay's car, and he comfortably makes it. That was brilliant right there. A lot of uh, smoke as well coming up, uh, going into uh, turn one from the various cars, but that was brilliant from McClay. And uh, next up, his teammate, uh, Harold Stadler, still only four and a half seconds off the lead is George McClay could still be in for his second double of the season. Just a quick question, Mark. Do you recall he won races two and three at uh, at Barber Motorsport Park? I know uh, McKnight won, uh, apologies, not McKnight. Uh, I know Jackson won race one, but I can't remember who won race two and three. Ah. I, I will look at it. I. I I'm sure you know it, but I, I'm going to look for myself. As uh, McClay moves past uh, Stadler, he's uh, picking up a bit of a fight. Not quite the same cooperation that we see from the uh, XVR boys. As now switches to the inside as McClay, and he will make it into turn 10 on this occasion. If I didn't have to take a look at the cameras and the live timing as well, I would probably help you on this uh, most important quest. At the same time, we can see that uh, in the lead, uh, 1.5 seconds, the gap is uh, shrinking and shrinking. And let's bring in uh, our lap time history. And you will see that this lap, uh, Brandon will take, I think, around half a second off uh, Richard Alsop in the race lead. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm so good. You, you, you are. You see, you're showing your worth now, aren't you? That was, uh, yeah, pretty much half a second right there. And Alsop under pressure then. Here comes Sanderson. He's now past Sadler. So Sadler, who was a fort in race one, no one could pass him. He's been passed quite a few times since then, though. And he's uh, down into sixth place now. Still not a bad position to be in, but it's uh, certainly a lot lower than he was uh, once upon a time after a very good start for, uh, for Stadler. Passed up of the race for Foggy on that last time. He was seven tenths faster than Alsop. And McClay catching up as well. Though McClay only with a 47 oh, that I think that was overtaking a little bit of traffic as well. But look at this fight. And I think this battle from, uh, from fifth place down to tenth place, Mark, I think this might continue to the end of the race. Yeah, this is looking uh, very, very tasty. Let's see if the uh, tyre wear and the pit strategy will maybe... Uh, split these, uh, these drivers up or maybe not at the front of the field uh, Foggy as you were saying with the fastest lap of the race closing in on Brandon as uh, look at here they go 2-3 wide Murmela that is uh, warming and behind him Stadler in front no way through and uh, also Tony Klusterman again not having uh, the best of rounds he's still struggling a bit I think to understand this car as uh, in the previous race, Nikolai Bogatayev didn't have the hood, and now he doesn't have uh, the, the, the rear part of the car. So he's been very democratic uh, to his new Ford. 
that after this, uh, his, uh, his sins will be, uh, you know, atoned. He will have atoned for his sins and he will be ready to start anew with the legendary Blue Oval. As he's still going strong, of course, but uh, P14, he will get a fast repair in the, in the pit stop cycle. Uh, probably Sanderson now is leading this pack and trying to pull away Sanderson having a, a very very good run today I have to say especially in the second race and you know let me say that let me let us check in with Le Champion as he is uh, trying to get uh, past Alsop before Foggy gets to him we know that uh, Brandon has always said that Foggy is the quicker of the two of the titles 2 to 1 for Brandon in this series at least and Brandon of course uh, as you say as we said many times uh, he said to us many times he thinks uh, he cannot recover oh look at how so sideways uh, after his uh, terrible start of the season I think he still can but we'll see I think that also is really feeling the pressure he needs to be careful he's sliding uh, every which way I'm afraid uh, he's going to destroy his tires, uh, and now Brandon is really, really close to him. I think this is a matter of time. Brandon hasn't won a race this season, remarkably. That's why I was asking about Barber. Uh, he won it was Foggy in race two, and uh, McKnight in race three, as uh, Namella round the outside. He's finished in second place early on. Can't get past Edler in this case, however, it was such a better uh, run out of the corner, really squaring off the track. And around this part of the track, it's very tricky to go for him even. Oh, well, it's going to be an awful exit, I think, for Sadler because he was so tight on the second part of the chicane after running it deep in the first pass, first part. And, uh, and for the lead, here comes Brandon. Oh, is it not enough, though? Alsop, better on the brakes. And he still reached the apex quite comfortably. So Brandon, perhaps uh, being a little bit too tentative there. Stadler, meanwhile, just about good enough on the brakes. And he's... Doing well to hang on against Nomella. But again, that might just be a matter of time. Nomella has much more pace. Here comes Brandon this time, much braver on the brakes. Alsop will keep the car around the outside, and of course, if he can just maintain it there, he'll have the inside for turn five. However, we did see earlier on uh, Stadler make this outside line at turn five work for him when he managed to get past uh, Richard Warmingham, of course. And uh, that was good from Alsop. And this is bringing Foggy back into it, and now only three seconds back to George McClay. The Stadler Shuttle is, uh, has many customers on board. It's been two races since I've tried to say that. I was doing an AI race the other day, and Truly was having like 10 cars behind him, and I thought uh, yeah. about uh, the Truly train. Oh, oh here we go, dive! Brandon. And the inside, that should be enough. There's no coming back from that. And Alsop gives way. That was a nice move from Brandon. And there is also, uh, I guess it's got to be uh, Namella getting past Stadler and now leads this train. Although I imagine he'll start to pull away. And once again, he'll be the leader of that train with Hal Stadler. So you're trying to come back, to be fair, is Richard Alsop. And that's a nice run going through the final corner. Has he got the straight line speed? He wants to at least stay in the draft so that he's got some kind of protection against Foggy. Now two seconds back to McClay. He's going to probably gain on them by, yeah, uh, a second and a half at least on the uh, now second place driver. Few drivers coming into the pit. Stadler and Jackson. Stadler didn't want to be overtaken anymore. He wants to do some undercutting. Granton held on into turn one. And now this is the part of the circuit where he should be able to stretch his legs. Foggy got to get past straight away. This is where Granton nearly got past on the last lap, but Foggy isn't close enough. And and say he's going to have to wait till turn five at the earliest. Is it me or the sun disappeared below the horizon? So effectively now the track will get uh, cooler and cooler the more we get into this race. We might even have to turn the headlights on at a certain point. Let's uh, quickly check in uh, on, the, on the weather. Uh, yeah, track getting colder now, 25 degrees after the 26. Of course, Celsius. And look at that again, very aggressive on the curb. If you do that with the F3 car, uh, you are not continuing your race. On the V8, especially with the old damage model, uh, or the current damage, I don't know. The, the, the damage model that he has, you can do that as Foggy now. Same move as his teammate. And that seems to be, as you were saying earlier, the trick to make moves around this place. Uh, stay close there and dive. 
because the driver in front has two options uh, letting you buy or uh, making contact with you basically yeah certainly although both those moves were quite courteous i'd say they, they didn't exactly run him out sort of road uh, but yeah just a sensible option maybe i'll stop a little bit more careful going into a corner not quite the confidence of those xvr drivers they're stadler first of the drivers who have pitted Oh no, you say he's not. Jackson is ahead of him. I think he made a mistake, Sam. Yeah. He did. That's not what you want. But cold tires around this place we have seen many times in pre and other series seems to be really, really sketchy around this Barcelona racetrack, Sam. Yeah, we saw it in the uh, Sim Racers World Endurance Championship, didn't we? Which, of course, will be on tomorrow. Certainly do check in for uh, the uh, five and a half, six hours of racing we'll have there. A uh, Glusterman finally catching up to the back of this pack. It's been a frustrating day for him so far. Frustrating, uh, well, midday, I guess uh, it is in uh, over in Canada. And uh, it does get past Bogotayev, at least Unberg as well. We'll, uh, we'll thank him a bit for that because he goes through quite swimmingly as well. Now the front runner's pitting. This does seem very early to pit, I must say, Mark. I realize he wants to get the undercut, but it seems just yeah so early in the race i mean we're only about a quarter of the way through yeah of course there is uh i know the sun is uh, not behind the horizon or below the horizon i see the some of the sun there uh, on the on the in the corner there no yeah i mean there is such a thing of course as being too too quick on the undercut and that of course uh, negates uh, partially the effects of the undercut as here we go with mcknight on the inside uh, of Sebula here uh, in the left hand. No, look at that sun, man. Maybe it was a cloud, a happy little cloud, so to speak. And great move from McKnight. That's the pass. Sebula was a little bit sideways there, not having the cleanest run to the sequence of corners. McKnight profits and he is up. He gained four spots, but the two biggest gainer in the biggest gainer in the field is Tony Kusterman with plus 11. And the two leaders plus seven each, uh, Johnny Brandon and uh, Nicole Foggy, whilst uh, Woodward goes in the pits and I think McClay very soon will launch an attack uh, for the final step on the podium. Would you say McClay could, should come into the pits on this lap, get the undercut, try to get track position on the XVR guys? Because uh, alsot has been defending pretty well so far, so he doesn't want to lose any time here. Yeah, I mean, this could be a good idea. Uh, I mean especially now maybe banking on the fact that foggy and brandon could fight each other you know so uh, i mean i, I could take benefits from that already this season hasn't uh -huh. it? yeah absolutely in suzuka race one where he won uh, after starting the last lap in third place uh, foggy was first brandon sorry brandon was first foggy was second and they, the pair of them made contact in turn one at Suzuka, then race two, it was domination uh, from uh, from McClay. Um, so yeah, I mean, this could be a good strategy, of course. Who better than the team principal should know this? I wonder what he's doing right now instead of. Uh, I I wonder. Commanding his team uh, from the pit box. So Brandon, eight tenths ahead. He lost a tenth on the last lap. Wonder if they'll know what they're going to. Eat. With each other on strategy, yeah. it seems there's can't you can't hide that much if you're talking to one another in the race. As we know, they do. Alsop with a crucial mistake there, and he's tightened up that corner. But it wasn't the best run for McClay. You can't see he had to hesitate to get on the power. We know he's really good on the brakes, though. Is McClay into turn one? But even he isn't nearly close enough for uh, an overtake into turn one on this occasion. Namella comes in. He was, uh, was he stuck behind anyone? He was maybe stuck behind warming him. There wasn't much traffic for him, so I'm surprised he went for that one, Namella. It will be uh, interesting to see where he comes out in relation to Jackson and Sadler, who of course have already pitted. There goes McClay. That is bold. And it hasn't worked. Alsop's good with that outside line. Had to defend like that against Brandon earlier on. We know that McClay doesn't get involved in many crashes, and so Probably won't go for anything too rash, and he, he, he knows how he wants to win the title. Outstop, maybe those tyres start to go off for him, because he's making a lot more mistakes now. 
so I think even also knows that uh, McClay is going to jump him in the pit cycle. So if McClay uses his head and thinks like a champion, or a future champion, uh, I think he will take all the necessary precautions uh, in making this overtake. And as soon as I say that he goes in with a nice dive, he should be able to get the move on without any risk. Go sideways. Okay. Ooh, no, no, no. Also. Keeps part of his car alongside. McClay's got better grip. He squeezes him on the inside. And now he's got to stay round the outside through this part of the track, does McClay. Then he'll have the inside for the chicane, and that should be all right for McClay. I'll stop, though. He's not oh. giving up, and he goes round the outside through the first part, has the inside for the second part, and now McClay does come into the pit, and that was probably one lap too late in hindsight because they've lost each other a load of time there, fighting one another completely unnecessarily. And, uh, well, I don't know what McClay's strategy there was. I, I, I think that was a last minute decision, seeing that he, he, he didn't want to face another lap fighting Alsop, just thought, okay, I'm going to come in now. I agree with you as uh, he gets on the jack, so he will take tires. Uh, let's see the pit stops count. So, yeah, the leader of the cars so far with the one pit stop is this guy here, Marco Murmela. Here comes McClay. Pretty long stop for McClay. This could be close between him and Namela. Now McClay's ahead, but not by a big margin, is he? Really short stop for Namella. Oh, Unberg off the side. Oh, and I think. Oh, McClay, oh, McClay he needed a defense. Oh no, he's done a he's done a Van Lusenord, and he's put it into the the wall, coming out of the pits on fresh tires. Oh, and George McClay, surely his first mistake of the season. Yeah, that, oh, how many times? That is totally Van Lusenord, isn't it? That is yeah. a carbon copy. Yeah, we've seen that crash many times, of course, famously uh, introduced by Van Lusenord in that race. Uh, with cold tires, you maybe have, or maybe you have too much grip than, um, or more grip than you were expecting. Uh, so you clip that curve there uh, with cold tires and you add into the wall and you can see here, uh, of course, a problem for Hunneberg. How much damage does George McClay have? Let's see from another camera angle, maybe. It's a very light tap, but of course uh, the time lost is... Uh, and smartly, the XVR boys uh, answer straight away. So has Foggy been able to save any fuel? He'll have to save quite a bit of fuel in order to uh, get ahead. We've seen between 9 and 12 second pit stops so far. Foggy was about a second and a half behind coming into the pits. And this could be where the race is made. Surprised that Foggy didn't try to mix up the strategy, to be honest. And then Foggy is going to get ahead. He did take less fuel. And it was a long stop for Brandon. Longest stop we've seen all day long for a normal pit stop. 13.6. Foggy, 11.88. It wasn't inspiring, but it was enough. And Nicole Foggy may have just taken away a chance of Johnny Brandon's first race win of the season. I'm a bit concerned for Marco Nurmela because he's the only driver under the 10 seconds mark with this pit stop. But yeah, Foggy with uh, a, a bold move, calculated risk maybe. And we'll see now, of course, the battle is on. A part of it may be fuel saving, like you were saying, part of it might be just risky strategy. What matters is uh, they are the first two cars uh, with one pistol to their name. McClay is behind Nurmela as well. And behind Jackson for that matter. Yeah, I think he might be uh, behind a few of the other drivers who are yet to pit, like Oh, Alsop, here we go, Marco is around. Oh, and Frost. Oh, and just about avoiding them is... Uh, I guess that was Jackson. Here comes McClay. He will get the position back then. That was a commentator, of course, and a half. I think you're preempting, to be honest, saying how he was in trouble. Mm, also, yeah. His car should be okay. Like he... But, of course, uh, you know. The man didn't quite seem to leave enough space for Frost there. I know that that was from uh, my perspective. Running wide was, uh, was Frost again. And this is, is he being lapped at the moment, Frost? 
Uh, this is uh, for position with Boca Tire. Yeah. Of course, we know ah, go, yeah. Ma Michael Big uh, from the USA, so he doesn't have a flag, unfortunately. So let's give him one. I thought he was from Antarctica. <laughs> it's because uh, he signed himself as a USA, and he put United States. And as you can see now, as if by magic, here comes the flag. But here also comes uh, his. Uh, Bogatari with his brand new Ford, now complete of all the accessories needed to race. And uh, Nikolai makes the move. Buzan is off the track. Uh oh. There he is. Oh no. Oh no. We've seen this. We've seen this before, and we're going to see this again. Has he hit the curb though? Is it just a bit more of a traditional spin? Has he even had contact? Uh, now that's a bit more of a traditional spin. The curb was uh, merely uh, uh, on on his way to the uh, to the incident. He'd lost it well before then. So another oh, and here's Sepula. That's his fight. He's got Klusterman behind him, and this is for proper position as well. Sepula's had a good day so far. Klusterman hasn't, but it does seem like the Never Quit Racing driver is a lot faster. They've got nine seconds to the drivers who have pitted. And I'm sure Klusman would absolutely find it humiliating to be overtaken by those guys when he's still got a pit stop to do. Steve Lavelli has come into the pits. It is Klusterman. No respect for the groundskeeper there by Sebula. He does a nice job of uh, destroying the grass. Slowing himself down in the process, also very risky with his new tires to go there on the grass. Lusterman makes the move, and I think he should be able to hold it. As also Whiting is in the pit, so first two drivers in the in the in the club championship race are in. A great battle here, the closest fight in the field. Of course, several drivers still having to pit Sam, so we all to play for in this final 20 minutes of the race here. Let's check in on the two XVR drivers. Here they are, seems like Fogg is slightly pulling away. Of course, don't forget he has a bit less fuel than Brandon. Fogg had the quickest Sector 3 of the race in this, uh, in this past lap, by the way. And here is our race leader. All alone, 6 seconds over Sanderson. He will have to stop, as will have to do the same Sanderson, and Warmingham, and McKnight, and Klusterman, and Sedna. The virtual leader... Oh, Yarek, don't do that. Save. Foggy is your virtual race leader. There is Alsop. So a lot later than his teammate, Namella. However, I think he's going to be quite a long way ahead of Namella after the issues earlier on. And Sensen now will lead the race. Will Warmingham stay out? No, he's coming to the pits. There he is. And McKnight. McKnight stayed out. No, he hasn't. There he is. A uh, Klusman stayed out there. So those guys, uh, Samson and Klusman, are very much the uh, odd ones out. Sebula as well, despite Sebula looking as though he was really struggling uh, for uh, tyres. We believe this is a 26 lap race, and seeing that we're on lap 15. Ooh. And this Johnny is a Brando, pretty late right? time. Oh, nice lap, yeah. yeah. So... I mean, to be fair, Foggy's lap would have been fast lap of the race if it hadn't been for Brandon. So they're both absolutely uh, flying right now. So as you can see, there are four drivers without a stop, but let's say five, of course, Switzer, Frost, and the three leaders. Let's see here in the back if we have other drivers with no stops. No. Frost has just got past Lavelli, and that is quite unusual because uh, Lavelli is just pitted. Was it uh, perhaps Lavelli coming out of the pits? I think he crashed. Aha. Take there from Steve, who saved the car, clipped the wall just a bit, went back of course, but uh, in a straight, uh, other drivers are zipping past you at a ludicrous speed. Boggy's nearly caught up to Sebula, and they've still got a few more corners to go. I'm just wondering, if, is he going to get held up? He'll be praying that Sebula comes into the pits, and actually he'll be praying that... Uh, that Klusman comes into the pits as well because he's catching up quick to him as well. 
Here's uh, Sebula. Still got one second to Foggy, I think. As long as he comes in, they're pretty much going to be alongside going into the pits when Sebula does come in. Look at uh, Yaroslav, he's really struggling. To, uh, he's having some massive problems making the corner there, but he still stays out. And here we go. Foggy's so, got lucky here. Yeah, Foggy left to make the move now. This could actually help Foggy. Because Brandon's going to possibly catch up to Sebulo going round turn three. Probably make the pass into four. But that's much better for Foggy than if he, for example, caught him around this part of the track. But yeah, very strange, Marco, why these guys are staying out. They're only going to have ten laps on the new tyres. Unless they know they can save them. But I think not think it's going to be possible. I'm ready. I'm ready to eat my my, my proverbial hat if this happens. But I, I, I mean, I've think. got pancakes. I'll eat them if we're wrong. I'll take that one for the team. It's too easy. Brandon makes the move on uh, the driver uh, from Atlantis Esports team and the beautiful country of Poland. So this is one done, and the next one is Tony Klusterman. So let's see a comparison between uh, Sanderson and Foggy in lap time history, and you can see gaining 2.4 seconds, then 3 seconds, then 3.2 seconds. This is all after the, the pit stop. Oh, and Sebula, unfortunately uh -oh. for him, is in the grass. Yeah, stayed out too long on those tyres. They are absolutely not good. There's Woodward. Well, that is on new tyres for Woodward, so that is all down to him. It's at turn four that he's made that mistake. He's dropped behind uh, Bogatyra because of that. Klusman stays out again. Maybe he just wants to uh, be, <laughs> be in the lead for a bit, uh, Tony. Um, but uh, yeah, into the pits goes Sanderson. Where will Sanderson come out? This might be all right for him. He might still be ahead of... Uh... It'll be around Nirmala, I think. Will Sanderson. Still stationary. 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 12 seconds. It's a longer stop, 13.7. So not the fastest stop we've seen all day. Here he comes. There is warming up. So he's still ahead of McKnight, is Sanderson. That's not bad, actually. Ninth place with some fresh tyres. Could still put on a, uh, a late race charge. Now here's Klusman being the, uh, the troublemaker that he is. He's uh, holding up the race leaders. And he's certainly make this, making this one a little bit more uh, spicy for us. There is Alstop and Sebula going side by side. Sebula still yet to pit, of course, and Alstop will make that come to be. Then we'll have to go back to Klusman and Foggy because Foggy's going to have a great chance at turn 10. Klusman gets his car on the inside, but he's just not got the grip to get the power down alongside into turn 10. They're similar times on the brakes. Foggy will get the cutback potentially. Can he get past here? He really needs to get past here. Foggy goes to the inside. He can't though. And here comes Brandon chasing after. Surely Klusman will come in to the pits on this lap. Otherwise he'll get easily overtaken going into turn one. And you can see how much he's defending is Klusman. This is remarkable considering that these guys are in totally different races. Will the Canadian come into the pits? No, he won't. And this is Brandon's best chance of this race. He's got a good launch coming out of the final corner. He's three tenths of a second behind. Foggy, though, with a draft from Klusman. And Klusman, on this occasion, not defending whatsoever. Foggy to the inside. Not a whole lot later on the brakes, but it's enough. And finally, he does retake the lead. But that could have got very messy for him. Here comes Brandon. He can't get past on the outside through two. However... Klusman drives it in way too deep oh. into three. And again, just not a car's width available for Brandon. And after looking like he was going to benefit from this one, he's actually lost out, it seems. Now goes to the outside. Needs to have a lot of trust in Klusman not to understeer into him. And that is nicely done. Offline for Brandon. A lot of sliding, though, on the exit. But uh, can turn the car into the corner, unlike Klusman. And that gap back up to 1.4 seconds. So, uh... Klusman causing some troubles there, but I think it was pretty much even for the two leaders. Let's see, checking on Sanderson. 
the last guy to pit, well, also Sebula pitted, but unfortunately for him, he had a couple of mistakes prior to the pit stop and he's down to, to 15th place. Uh, so he has a long way to go in front of him, Sanderson in front of McKnight. So Foggy, 1.4 seconds over Brandon, and then 2.3 seconds behind Foggy, we find Tony Klusterman. McKnight v Sanderson. McKnight with older tyres by two laps, but he does still seem to have a pace advantage. No effective lap time so far, but certainly the gap has come down since Sanderson came into the pits. Klusterman finally comes in. So Klusterman will be, he'll be behind McKnight, won't he? He might still be ahead of Namella, but it'll be close. So eight more laps in this race, we assume. Boosman with a faster pit stop, 11.12 seconds. However, Nomella will comfortably go ahead of him. I did not expect it to be uh, quite that uh, easy. And uh, yeah, Klusman miles behind, isn't he? He's going to do very well to catch up to Nomella by the end of the race. He is just ahead of Steve Lavelli, of course, pole sitter for this race. Sanson on that last lap, slower than Warmingham. Not really too much prospects of any overtakes. McClay managed to get past Jackson, by the way. I say he managed to get, I, I think he was ahead of Jackson all the time. So McClay, despite that spin earlier on, still in fourth place, but uh, a long way off Richard Alsop. So it looks like there's going to be a couple of podiums today for uh, Racecraft Esports. After oh, the... Sebula with a big risk. But yeah, closest fight on the field right now is this one. Well, of course, we have a fight here between Unneberg and Woodward. Sadly, not very close uh, to the pointy end of the field. Also, we have uh, Whiting and Soare, leader uh, of the club races, Steve Lavelli, again, just like in race one. As you can see the sun moving. I absolutely love the weather model in iRacing. Brandon in second place, so Alsop looking... Uh, I'd say looking good for third place, what, what do you reckon, Sam? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anything can go wrong for him now unless uh, he makes a mistake. Got fresh tires as well, of course, as Alsop. He picked him lap 14, um, so he, he should be absolutely fine. McClay uh, actually slower than him on that last side. In fact, Alsop was half a second faster than the leaders. But he's got uh, too big a gap uh, to make up. Sanson better lap time from him that time. So, of course, with those marginally fresher tyres, uh, not a whole lot fresher tyres, though, uh, seven tenths of a second faster than Rich Warming was his uh, personal best lap of the race. And they are both catching up to Chris Jackson as well. So maybe the battle for fifth place could warm up quite a bit later on. And McKnight's coming with Sanderson as well, so he could have a four-way battle for this. Warmingham uh, was struggling to make too many moves earlier on in the event. Who was it who he was trailing in race one? Was it Sebula? Yeah. That Warmingham was stuck think, behind, yeah. yeah. And uh, it took him until pretty much the, the penultimate lap to get past. Needs to be a bit quicker on that one this time, does Warmingham. Can't afford to lose any time. Jackson, of course, going for the title. Second place, well, third place in the championship going into this round. To winning a race at, uh, well, winning two races, I believe, so far this season. Won a race at Barber last time out. However, long way away from that at the moment, and he might be a long way away from sixth place soon as well, fifth place even, because Warmingham is right side so still. Any defence put up by Jackson, not at the moment. However, he's much more confident on the brakes and maintains that place into turn one. 
sliding is Jackson as you can see Warmingham trying to inch closer and closer much fresher tires of course for Warmingham as he dives on the inside into Mercedes corner as I always call it as I say one of the few memories I have of that time period of F1 despite having watched basically every race so I don't know, maybe it was that boring, that, 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 that uh, you know, in-between era, between the current era and the small car, a small wing era of the 2009 uh, cars. I say small wing, ah. but uh, the front wing was like a, a snow uh, plowing machine, so... <laughs> <laughs> and they are gonna be for a little bit longer as well, aren't they? Of oh, yeah. 2022, uh, which is probably a sensible sensible choice but uh oh no it's it's annoying isn't it we, we've waited four decades for uh, for ground effects to come back we can wait another year peter bingham in six 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 seven oh, apologies uh with a little bit of an excursion turn five seen a few issues at turn five very tricky corner that i was watching some uh some replay of this track um, a few days ago, I can't even remember what year it was, but uh, it, it, it's very picturesque. The uh, the, the the far views of, um, of of this circuit. Can't see so much of them anymore with the uh, with the grandstands, but it's uh, of course a very beautiful country uh, around uh, this area in uh, in Barcelona. As Jackson going defensive, way better on the brakes though was warming up, and he gets it stopped. Nice move. From the 714 car, and he had to make that move because Samson would have been on them if he'd uh, waited one more lap. And now he should be able to pull away comfortably. Nice move there from Richard Warren. That outside line seems the much better line to turn one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was not expecting him to make the move on the outside, but those fresher tires, of course, a little bit of bravery as we have uh, Murmela and Klustermann fight, fighting it out, of course, Tony, another driver with much fresher tires than the match of the opposition. And so I think uh, he could uh, realistically try and go for a move here. They are side by side on the outside, is Tony. Uh, it's uh, always tough, Sam, when you go on the outsider, of course, you know you're going to be pushed towards that, that runoff area. And you don't want to be there at all, but look at Tony on the outside. Can he get the job done? onto the long right hander here and defending on the back stretch and i think he can brilliant so seven seconds to catch up to jamie mcknight he could still get uh, i'm thinking sixth place he could still get out to this one because he's upping two seconds a lot faster than the guys ahead so he, he's absolutely romping along though i guess that time might start bleeding away from him at some point points we've got uh three more laps for him coming up i believe race leaders crossing the line right now uh, sorry no the race leaders have already crossed the line a, a while back so yeah i think three more laps for oh no it's probably not going to be enough is it he, he's going to be on the back of them but i don't think he's going to be quite close enough to really do anything with it is that uh, his placement really feels like he could have come into the pits two or three laps earlier and i uh, would have had a few more laps to get the job done uh, Nico Foggy he's certainly looking like he's going to get the job done to you and a bit seconds ahead of Johnny Brandon. will be fascinating to get an interview with uh, with the pair of them later on about uh, that pit stop. How Foggy was uh, 1.8 seconds faster in the pit stop sequence and he needed every bit of that 1.8 seconds in order to get ahead. And since then it's been rather simple for him apart from maybe that slight fright from, uh, from Tony Kluisman earlier on. This is the uh, pretty much the side of the Jackson v Sanderson for six. Sebula went past uh, Stadler here. Very early on the brakes so was the Texans car. Did Stadler have a spin at all? When he came out of the pits, yes. Of course, yeah. I was thinking how, how it, it's not really gone his way. Yeah, too Just bad came into the was, pits was, mega he, early. Yeah, it was showing great pace, uh, race one, race two. Um, before that, uh, it made a, it, oddly made a mistake, if you remember, at the left hander uh, down the hill, not uh, in the first corner as most people do. That is uh, Michael Frost 
just stuck on the uh, on the rallycross circuit, which is a shame that we don't have that yet, at least on iRacing. You can use it a little bit. You can see here, Frost, if you go to the right there, there is actually a slight uh, detour onto uh, a jump. I think Frost has made his own jump there, to be honest. Um, but uh, you, you can just see the dirt in the background there. You, there, there. you can use a little bit of the rallycross circuit. Unfortunately, that isn't an option on uh, on iRacing yet. I, I have no idea why they haven't included it because we've still got a bit of a lack of rallycross tracks and they did go to, go to Norway of all places just to scan one. Um, so uh, I don't know why they didn't want that, but hopefully that will be included soon. Also, uh, Silverstone as well. Not sure if they did scan it at Silverstone, but uh, fingers crossed for that. Uh, way quicker right now is Sanson than Jackson. Could go for it into five. Jackson defends. Sanson doesn't really commit to either line, and so doesn't get a much better exit from turn five into six. But I think turn ten, once again, will probably be his best chance. I, I'm, I'm using all these corner names. Uh, or, or corner numbers. They do have names these corners, so apologies. Because yes, uh, I am a big fan of corner numbers. Oh, corner, corner names, apologies. But um, yeah, I, Le, Le Cakes, uh, I think. Yeah, most is, of is them are in, in Catalan, uh, and I don't uh, confidently know how to pronounce it, it so I refrain from making uh, bad mistakes. The good thing with this track, at least, is that you can kind of see how it was drawn by a compass. And so very, very few of the corners are questionable. You, you never go, oh, is, is that turn six or is it turn seven? Pretty much all the corners are laid out for you. Um, so, so at least at least it's not like a Kota, for example, where you question what is a corner and what isn't. Well, first half of the track is corners, second half of the track is angles. Yes, yeah. <laughs> to quote one, a friend of mine, this is not my creation, but... Uh, it, it illustrates perfectly whether you like it or not, uh, whether your opinion of the track is, uh, that's basically what it is. So, um, Nicole Foggy, uh, I guess it's uh, in his final lap, considering where he is and only 30 seconds left on the clock. So, nice uh, comeback uh, drive from him, from uh, Brandon. I mean, they played the strategy perfectly, but he played it even better, of course. He was able to jump his teammate. And then pull away. Uh, also, I think uh, his strategy in the end worked out very well, and he will uh, get uh, third. Uh, well deserved the third. McClay limiting the damage in fourth, and Warmingham in fifth. Only one battle left. Don't know if Sanderson will be able to get past Jackson. Maybe not after this mistake. Uh, let's see, Foggy Sam only has the dreadful chicane. To, to to do and it will be then one last corner and celebration a little bit of the bubble for him yeah here comes Nicole Foggy coming through the final corner at Barcelona P3 in race one and it's going to be P1 in race two Foggy wins Brandon second it's an XBR one two great result for Alsop double podium today for Racecraft Esports, McClay, as Michael was saying, limiting the damage in fourth. Warming in fifth. Uh, not going to quite catch up right in the closing stages is Klusterman. He will remain in ninth. One more lap and he would have probably been able to get onto the back of Jamie McKnight. And once again, it's going to be a similar story. P11 for Steve Lavelli. It's going to be P1 out of the club drivers. And despite not necessarily the race two that he was hoping for, certainly not the start of the race two that he wanted, he's done another great job at scoring a lot of points to Steve Valley, and it's turning into a fantastic championship charge from him. Buzan uh, has crossed the line in 15th. White Sink is once again going to be in a bit of a close battle to the line, but once again he's going to hang on. Last time he was against Pogatayev. This time, Dominic Sori is going to closely lose out in that uh, 17th place. Unberg just behind them. And uh, Woodward, Hoffman and Rebello will be the final drivers to cross the line. Uh, so, Marco, I think um, I think today's races came out down to moments, didn't they? I, I, I think if you made a mistake, you really paid for it because of the tricky to overtaking elements of this track. And in the end, Foggy 
Joe without mistake, at least in that race too. And that is how he managed to win because make a small mistake as Brandon did in the pits or McClare course did with the spin. Then uh, you're going to lose out. But Foggy was uh, was absolutely perfect. He absolutely was. And uh, he gets a slow motion as well, both him and his teammate. Great performance all around by the XVR boys in race two. As I said, Foggy with the great strategy call, great pit stop. And in the end, uh, he was not only able to make the move, but then he, you have to back it up on track after you make the pass in the pits. And he certainly was able to do that, uh, pulling away from, uh, from Brandon and uh, getting uh, a very important race victory. And now, here we go with the race results. Yes, and it is Nick Hoffoggy with another race win this season. I believe that might be his third race win of the season. Uh, he is backing them up and he does close the championship lead. Johnny Brenton finishes in second place. Richard Alsop in third. Uh, George McLean, not the points highest scorer, but uh, once again, a, a good meeting. A first and a fourth for him. Richard Warmium finished in fifth. Uh, then there's Chris Jackson, Wayne Sanson. Jim McKnight and Tony Klusman, Marco Namella rounding out the uh, top 10. All those guys, I think. Uh, McKnight, Klusman and Namella. Perhaps regretting a couple of things that happened uh, tonight. Uh, a little bit unlucky out there. Uh, Steve Lavelli from Pole finishes in 11th once again, but still good points for him. Uh, Yasso Sebula finishes in 12th. Then there's Nikolai Bogotarev, Harold Stadler, Sam Buzan, Clyde White, St. Dominic Soy, Ole Christian Unberg, Anthony Woodward, Andrew Hoffman, Justin Rebello, and then one lap down were Michael Frost, Peter Bingham, and Bill Switzer. No retirements. It's uh, tricky to hit the walls around here at Barcelona because you've got those big gravel traps. Uh, but still, good job from the drivers to uh, to keep it all clean out there. Uh, and straight away, we're going to get an interview with a driver. We are going to talk to Marco Namella, who had a uh, very good race one in particular. Um, congratulations, Marco. I mean, Second place, that was uh, just take us through the starts for that race one because that was really where you gained a lot of places. Uh, yeah, I gained two places. It was a like clean start, I didn't have a clue where to break, so I lifted early and battled with the brake on the turn one and then noticed there was spin and I was prepared to stop the car even, but there was a little bit of room on the inside and got two positions there. And then after that, we saw you coming under a lot of pressure from uh, Nicole Foggy, but uh, you managed to hold strong. You must have been pleased with your defense. Yeah, actually, I, was, I have been watching like whole day for Nicole's driving. So I actually knew where he was faster than me and where I needed to defend hard. And then I, uh, I think he made a breaking mistake. I even dodged him a little bit, so he didn't hit me. Yeah. And then in that uh, in that race two, I believe you came into the pits. Uh, yeah, you came into the pits pretty early on on lap nine, and then had a bit of a spin. Do you think it was the right strategy to to, to come in so early and 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 just take us through that spin that you had as well? Um, yeah, that spin is probably just my own fault. Uh, I I heard clear and then right side immediately after, and then uh, it's just no way to. Uh cover that anymore and uh, yeah that uh, I was pretty good on the tires so uh, like uh, the first race uh, even if I when I started to push a little even a little bit I could catch uh, McClay but I couldn't keep the car uh, the lap times consistent so I just eased off and I noticed I have a pretty good pace on the later part of the stint so uh, I tried to do that Absolutely. And next up, uh, we are heading to uh, Bathurst for an, uh, a, a, a normal race. Oh, sorry, a, an endurance race. Apologies. Um, how confident are you feeling about that one? That sounds like quite a daunting task. Yeah, it's probably fun. Uh, like all the races have been fun. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Well, best of luck for that one, Mark. Hey, before we let you go, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, yeah, Richard, uh, he had a good race and, uh, he had like long, uh, break before joining the V8 and, uh, Brian, uh, setting up some 
hosted sessions for practice and uh, yeah and RKE our team yeah and you guys and Racetech and everybody on this side awesome thank you very much Marke and uh, best of luck for two weeks time yeah, thanks that was uh, Marco Namella for Racecraft Esports finishing in second place in race one and 10th place in race two. Uh, Marco, who do you want to have a chat with now? Uh, you know, let's have a chat with, uh, with Nicole Foggy. Hello, Nicole Foggy. Welcome to the boot. Uh, good day, good day. So congratulations uh, for a very, very good uh, day of racing, especially, of course, uh, the victory in race two. Tell us about uh, your uh, races uh, today. Uh, race one, oh, I duffed up quality. Me and Johnny duffed up quality, but uh, uh, George definitely had a good time anyway to get up the front. I uh, don't know what I would have got, but uh, he did a good job of winning that. Um, and then oh, it, it was behind Marco. I was going to try and pass him, and I, I think either he broke slightly early I, I, well, I, I think it was my fault. I, I just I brought too late and I had to take a void in action and went went wide onto the sand and that was that pretty much. I, mean, I, I could have maybe caught George if I got past uh, Marco in time, but uh, unfortunately I, I made a mistake there. And then race two um, went pretty smoothly. And then, yeah, I was behind Johnny. Um, we, we were about the same pace. And then he just took, he, he always takes more fuel, well, normally takes more fuel than me. So, uh, Ended up being pretty perfect. That <laughs> I think <laughs> ju just uh, enough less than him to to jump him in the pits. Um, so, what about uh, your feelings toward the racetrack? I mean, it has been uh, tough to have good races around here in uh, many categories here in racing, not to mention real life. How was it with the with the V8 today? Today, mm, I, I do like the track, um, and I do I do like it in GT3s and stuff. But it's difficult in this car for sure. Um, I it was hard to find. We were trying to mess about with the setup this week, and uh, it was just it was so hard finding something that was both fast and lasted a while. Because the really the the rear just starts going both into the corners and coming out. And you've got these long corners. You've got to really control the throttle, and yeah, it's it's pretty difficult. And if you make a mistake, you lose like half a second or something. You know, you lose everything that you've gained. Um, so. Uh, it can be a good one, and I've had some good races here, but the V8s are difficult. I think you, you need to spend a good bit of time getting a good setup, experimenting and stuff, and that's what we've got to do today, you know, against other people, see how, see how other people were pace-wise and, and where you gain time and stuff. So good track, but difficult in the V8. Two weeks uh, from today, it's the big one, Bathurst Endurance Race. Are you ready? <laughs> I think so. Bathurst probably my my second favorite track anyway. Uh, hoping I think we got a little bit more of a handle on what different parts of the set uh, of the car do when you for for the for the setup. Um, so hopefully we find a good one for Bathurst. I'm hoping I'm fast there. That's my that's my uh, track that I always hope I'm I'm, I'm going to be pretty decent at. So yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome, Nicole. Well, thank you very much. Before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank. Ah uh, yeah, just uh, XVR and Immortal and uh, the guys that organise the V8s and and uh, you for broadcasting as well. Thank Fantastic! Thank you very much, man. Enjoy your victory, and we'll catch you in a couple weeks' uh, time. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys soon. So that was John. That was Nicole Foggy. Sam, who are we getting next? I think we will talk with. A uh, race one winner, uh, George McClay, uh, who also finished in fourth place in race two. Uh, congratulations, George. I mean, take us through that first race. It, it, it all seemed quite simple for you. Good evening, guys. How you doing? Um, I race, race one was good. But the, it's quite difficult to qualify when you've got all these cars on track. Um, but what do you call it? I managed to get a good lap, a, a kind of half-decent lap in, whereas some of the other guys maybe never got one in, so it gave me, gave me pull. cost two seconds. And then in, uh, just how, how comfortable was it out there? How much were you pushing in in race one? How, how, did, the, uh, how did the car feel? Because it, it seemed like you were 
we we're kind of just managing the pace. He seems to have about two tenths on everyone. Um, well, the first the first race, obviously, Chris made a great start, and um, I thought he was actually going to get us into turn one. Um, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure what happened to him. And then I got a bit of a gap. Um, and then I think and I was looking at my I kept on looking at the relative and saw Foggy sitting in third. I was like, oh no, if he gets by Marco, then he's going to end up catching me. And then in uh, race two, it was looking pretty good for you early on. I mean, you were making some really good overtakes. I mean, considering that most drivers were struggling to overtake today, you, you seem to be getting past a lot of guys at the start of race two. Yeah, r uh, race two, the, the start was really, really good. Uh, even up until before the pits, that's where it went wrong, obviously. Um, when I caught up to Richard, I was trying to get by him as quick as possible. Oh, it was great racing with Richard, but I was really wanting to fight the cars in front of him. Um, so I decided to go for a different strategy and pit early. And then, um, obviously, when I came out, I made that mistake. At turn one, I was trying to get trying to push too hard, ended up losing it. So that was a uh, kind of race wasted. And next up, we head to uh, Bathurst for the endurance round. Do you kind of think of seeing that, of course, this is such a, uh, the supercars are so associated to Bathurst. Do you kind of think of the Bathurst race each season as kind of like the Monaco GP or the Indy 500? It, 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 has it got an extra weight of importance or do you kind of just think of it as a, as a standard round of the championship? The thing about Bathurst is everybody seems to be really quick in this car in Bathurst. Um, and I'm, I, I like the track, I think it's good, but obviously I, I think uh, Johnny's the same. He's no the, he's no great at Bathurst either compared to like Foggy, even Tony and the NQR guys. And I'm sure um, you have Tally Anchik turn up and maybe a few other guys as well. So I'm not actually looking forward to Bathurst just because I don't think I'll get a great result there. Well, we certainly wish you the best of luck for that one, George. Before we let you go, is there any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? Yeah, I obviously use guys for doing a great job on the broadcast and um, my team, Texans, Fitstein Motorsport, for uh, all the help and stuff the gears. But I've got to go and practice now for the SRW and the World GT on Monday because I've not done any laps there yet. Well, I we certainly uh, wish you the best of luck. We'll see you, I guess, tomorrow for that one as well. So hopefully. We'll be talking to you as the uh, race winners in the TCR class for that one um, tomorrow. Uh, thanks for having a chat with us, George. And uh, yeah, best of luck for tomorrow and, and, uh, and Monday. Great. Thanks, guys. So that was uh, George McClay for Texans Fitzday Moat Sport Finishing in first place and fourth, fourth place today. Um, Marco, who are you standing by with now? I would do it. Johnny Brandon, we rudely interrupted from uh, uh, his uh, post-race uh, chat with the other drivers. Hello, Johnny. Evening, Marco. That's quite all right. No problem. So, how has it been today? Um, how did your races uh, go? It was fun. Um, not without some issues, but mostly my own doing. So... Um... Yeah, messed up in qualifying. And a lot more pace in the car. I think Nickel did as well. I just couldn't put a lap in, so we didn't start where we should have started, probably. And then in turn one, I got caught out by the guys in front breaking a bit earlier than was expecting and hit Chris at the start of the braking zone, which I apologise for. And it's totally my fault. It doesn't matter if he broke early. It's completely my fault. Um, and then when he turned in, he dropped it right in front of me and I just had nowhere to go. And uh, yeah, then got a slow down trying to avoid everybody. So it was disastrous race one. And then I had a damaged car trying to drive around. So damage limitation. Race two was good. And then Foggy lied to me and told me to take too much fuel. <laughs> and overtook me in the pit. I'd, I've just been reminding him that he's my teammate. He said and, that uh, that uh, he knew you were going to taking uh, too much fuel because you always yeah, do because that. because he told me. No, okay. he told me. Okay. <laughs> That's a different version of the story, then. <laughs> nah, it's, it's, it's only jokes. At the beginning of the race, I didn't actually work it out. So I said, how much do we need? And we all thought it was about six to seven gallons for tyres to be changed. So I just took 6.6 .6 or 6.8 gallons just because I thought that was 
how long it takes to do the tyres. And um, and then Foggy's driving past me. I said, oh, how much did you take? He's like, no, five. <laughs> oh, my God. So it's my own fault for not working it out. But being my teammate, he could have actually told me, but never mind. I'll get him back at some point. One uh, more question for you. Uh, it was a great race, though. There, yeah, the, the question that we are all asking, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure you are ready for Bathurst, but what... I are hate Bathurst. <laughs> well, I you... don't hate Bathurst, that's wrong. I'm sick of Bathurst, that's probably a better thing. It's just too much, to... plus I'm not very quick. I like the track, but I'm not, not very quick for some reason, so not looking forward to Bathurst. Okay. <laughs> My prediction <laughs> would probably be Nickel to win that. He's, he's very fast at Bathurst. Normally, I'd be surprised if uh, if anyone can beat him. But Tony's pretty good round there. They've done a lot of laps, those guys, in the V8s round by first. But I'll put my money on my team, mate. One more question. Then, of course, or more than a question, of course, uh, the usual, uh, uh, you know, if you have uh, anyone you'd like to give a shout out to, this is your moment. Um, well, shout out to Nickel. Thank you for the advice on the fuel in the pit stop. <laughs> Um, you guys for the great broadcast, I'm sure. Um, everyone that runs the league. And um, all my teammates at XBR. Um, Host 365, Inter Racing, Virtual Racing Association, um, Simortal, everybody that helps us out there. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. See you at the next one. Thank you very much, uh, Johnny. And now, now... We should have one more interview, Sam. Yes, we've got Yasuo Sebula uh, with us now. Um, so, uh, welcome to the booth, Yasuo. And uh, congratulations, particularly on that race. Well, I mean, that battle with Richard Warmium was absolutely great to watch. Are you with us, uh, Yasuo? We cannot hear you currently. Um, Mike seems to be to take now. I mean, I mean, there is su su something there. But I can't hear anything at the moment. So uh, we'll give Yaslo a, a, a moment at least uh, to try to resolve those issues. Um, but uh, I, we'll have a quick word, Marco, on the next round of championship. Uh, Bathurst, of course. Um, I mean, that's going to be... Once again, the enduro format for that one, and uh, just tricky to keep it out of the walls for the entire, what, one hour, 30 minutes we're going to have. Did I miss something? Like, we were talking to, to Yaroslav. Uh, yeah, I uh, sorry, his, his microphone is, uh, is not working at the moment, okay. is Yaroslav. No, because so, I, need, uh, I, I needed to go and open the, the door for the dog who wanted to go uh, out of my room. So, jo Johnny was just saying, uh, th th thanks for the good broadcast. <laughs> We've and ruined it. I destroyed everything. I destroyed uh, the, the, the illusion. No, no, uh, honestly, I'm blaming Yaslo, and he can hear us right now, and he can't even answer back uh, <laughs> because ever since the microphone issues, this has gone down the pot as this, uh, as this uh, broadcast. Um, I was just saying how tricky it is just to keep no, out no, the No, no, I got the question. I, I thought it was for Yaroslav, the question, not for me. No, yeah, I mean, it's tough oh, to okay. get... Uh, I mean, I should know better than anyone else, of course, how tough it is to keep it, uh, uh, you know, uh, to keep it away from the walls. So, you gotta be careful. You have, yes, one fast repair, but being an endurance race, you want to have the lowest number of uh, pit stops as possible. So... I think that uh, I think that it's going to be um, a, a tough race, but uh, experience will be absolutely uh, important, especially drivers who know a lot about uh, you know racing uh, in, uh, in, uh, in 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 that car on the track. Of course, it's the first time for these new cars, new tire model, etc. There, I think. Uh, yes, of course it is because it is their debut in this season. So, a lot of unknowns. Who knows, you might have a surprise driver winning the race. Yeah, certainly uh, ho certainly hope for uh, something like that, as, uh, as was being said before by uh, George McClay. A lot of quick drives on Bathurst. The drivers really do know it extremely well. Seems so we're not going to get the interview 
with uh, with Yaslo, which is a bit of a shame, but we'll certainly uh, pencil that in for uh, for next week to have a uh, a chat with him. And uh, I think that pretty much rounds off our broadcast for this evening. So I do uh, like this video. If you have enjoyed it, we'd certainly appreciate it. Subscribe to Apex Racing TV. Check out the uh, Racing Esports Network as well. We're going to be back in uh, in a couple of hours, um, mm -hmm. 22 GMT, for the uh, Formula 3.5 Championship. Uh, that, oh, I was about to say that is from, oh, what track is it from? Uh, think hard. Can't think of where it is from. It will be good regardless. Silverstone was really cool. And Road America. Sure. Road America, there you go. It was on the tip of my tongue. Um, I'm sure it'll be very good around Road America as well. So certainly do tune in uh, for that one in a, uh, in, in a couple of hours. And of course, uh, do check out the World GT Championship on the Esports Network on Monday. We've also got Aussie Mixed and Fixed on the Esports Network. Also, all, all our broadcasts on the Esports Network will now be broadcast on Apex Racing TV as well which is really cool. Um, so you can check, catch it on there. Um, also, we've got the Sim Racers World Endurance Championship. That is tomorrow, uh, pretty much all day. I mean, that's going to be another close to six-hour race. I believe that's from Spa. Yes. Uh, endurance pits we are used for that one. And then also, uh, we'll have the Apex Racing League GT Championship uh, tomorrow evening as well. So busy upcoming week for us, uh, which is uh, absolutely fantastic. And uh, hopefully you'll be back with us as well in a couple of weeks for the next round of the Race Tech U of the H Supercar Series from Bathurst, of course. So from me and from Marco, we're going to say goodbye and we'll see you next time.